But what I really want to talk about today is like high volume and low volume eating because it's so important. Um, and it's really what like allows you to be in control of your food and in control of your hunger cues and be able to kind of like mold and align the two, right? So whether you're in the shred program or you're not, this is completely going to apply to you. Um, there may be slight, slight differences, but honestly, it's very, very similar in terms of this. So the when you're in shred, you have your food charts and you have your um, food list and everything, and then you have your individual like nutrition portion plan. Um, so it's simple if you guys prep like the same meals each week, obviously, because then you can prep them in bulk, you can have your food ready in bulk, whether you portion it or whether you keep it in bulk is totally like individual preference. Um, but the biggest thing, like you should never be like super, super full or super, super starving because you ultimately have the power to pick the food that matches your hunger levels. So like if you find that the calorie and macro target that you are on right now, um, that you're very hungry on it, again, like that is likely normal because likely your goal is fat loss and likely we have you in a calorie deficit. Um, so us changing your nutritional target, sometimes, yes, that needs to happen. Usually it's going to be a swap in food choices because you're going to need to pick more of those foods that are going to fill you up. Okay. And the, the food charts will absolutely help you with that. You can also ask us, you can also post in the group. Um, so you, like the ones I like to use for an example is like spaghetti squash, butternut squash, zucchini. Those are like very low carb and very high volume. You can eat a lot of those things. Um, in comparison to things like rice that are our popular go-to, in comparison to things like oats, which are like our main go-to, um, you can eat, there's like so many foods you can eat that will fill you up like crazy, potentially compared to what you're eating now. So it goes the other way as well. If you find that you are very, very full, and again, for those of you who've done the Shred program before, you know that the first one to two weeks of Shred, you're going to be pretty full. That's just kind of how the program is. Um... But again, like if you find that you feel way too full, that does not mean don't eat your food. It means pick foods that contain more calories so you can still get them in. So again, it would be like applying the complete opposite. If you feel like the food that we're telling you to eat is way too much, you want to pick those foods that you can eat more of. So instead of eating um, like chicken breast, which is pretty much completely lean protein, plus an added fat source like an avocado, you might want to go for something like a piece of steak because that's going to have a little more protein than your chicken breast usually, and it's going to have your added fat. So instead of eating, I'm just throwing numbers out, but say 130 grams of chicken and 60 grams of avocado, you're going to have only have to have like 95 grams of steak, right? So there you go. You just decreased your food volume like crazy and you still got the same amount of nutrients. Does that make sense so far? I mean, have a drink of water. Another thing, like nuts. Nuts can be your best friend if you're very full and you just want to get some calories. Nuts can be your worst enemy if you don't have a ton of calories to allocate and you're just chowing down on the nuts. I love nuts. I love nuts. <laughs> They're so freaking good. Okay, so anyone... Samantha, I think Samantha's the only one here who lives in like the lower mainland area. So I used to live in the Vancouver area. My sister, my sister, if she watches this, will know because she buys me these and sends me them for every holiday. But I think this store is called like Ayub's. Samantha, if you're watching, let us know if you've ever tried it. If you haven't, you need to go. I think it's a franchise because they have quite a few of them in the lower mainland area. And it's like this luxury nut store. And you go in and there's like these fancy, I don't know what they're called, like you open the lid and scoop them out. Um, those all over the store, but they're like super fancy. And then they have all these kinds of nuts and they're the best ones are the lemon saffron cashews. Oh, they are to die for, but they have like Greek flavored things and like barbecue, like they have every kind of every nut and like dried fruit and everything. Oh, it's so delicious. It's like my, my weakness. I freaking love nuts. Um, but yeah, like you, like, 20 calorie, 20 grams of nuts actually has a lot of calories in it. So again, something to definitely be mindful. Sounds very posh. Yeah, like one little tiny thing of nuts is like 50 bucks. It's crazy. But they're so delicious. 
Um, okay, going off track here, but yeah, another really good example. So this is actually one of my tips. So let's say that you are freaking starving and on your meal plan, it says, I'm just throwing these numbers out. I don't have every number memorized, so I'm just throwing out numbers that might not be accurate. <laughs> let's say that you have on your plan like 100 grams of yam, okay? So yam is like the orange kind of sweet potato. Um, and let's say, what would that be? That's like around 25 grams of carbs, I'm thinking. I honestly should just have the chart up. I'm just, I don't know. I don't have it memorized, believe it or not. Anyways, so you could have 100 grams of your yam. Or you could have, so white sweet potato um, is actually going to have a lot less, not a lot, but a relatively significant less amount of carbs per gram than your typical yam. So instead of, um, like if you are very, 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 very full, you could actifry, like air fry your yam because that's going to dehydrate it and then you're going to have to eat less again. So you could actify your yam into a 90 gram serving. 90 grams is not going to fill you up very much. So if you're struggling to hit your food, that's going to be a great option because you're only going to have to eat 90 grams of actified yam. Now let's say that you are freaking starving. You feel like you're going to die. You're so hungry. Okay, well, let's go to your white sweet potato, which I think you can have about 130 grams of for the same amount of yam. Now let's say that you mash it and let's say that you add an additional 100 grams of mashed cauliflower. For some reason, I feel like men don't like cauliflower. I don't know why, but I think most of the women here don't mind cauliflower. Anyways, um, you could add 100 grams of mashed cauliflower to your 130 grams of um, mashed white sweet potato. Now you're going to have 230 grams worth of carbs that you could eat for the same amount as your 90 grams of active fried yam. Is that making sense? Do you see the difference there? You're getting the same number of carbs, same number of calories, or very similar for two completely different serving sizes. Okay. Ashley says she also loves nuts. And Rochelle says replay. Rochelle says, oh, I thought I missed it. Gonna have to replay the start. <laughs> You're only We're only really just getting started, but <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Um, so my next high volume food tip do not knock this one until you try it. Let, let me know if you have tried this. I have talked about this before, but it was a very long time ago. So I don't know if I had any of you guys as clients. It was like a couple of years ago, I think. Um, I used to do this all the time. Um, Amanda says, where do you buy your white sweet potato locally? Uh, pretty much always save on foods. Sobeys doesn't usually have it. Sometimes Superstore has it, but rarely. So pretty much always save on foods. And it's right beside, like, the yams and, like, the purple sweet potatoes and stuff. Um, purple sweet potatoes are also a good option, too. They're just more expensive, so I don't buy them because they're, like, taste the same. Cheryl says, it's hit or miss. I haven't found any at Superstore. Yeah, they're not usually there, but I have gotten them there before. Um, okay, so next one. This is the one that I said don't knock it till you try it. This was like my go-to when I was in prep. So I obviously haven't competed in quite a few years. <laughs> um, I did in 2016 and 2017. Um, maybe it'll be a thing in 2023, but it's definitely not going to be this year. Um, what's it called? So you could do it shredded. Most people do it shredded, but I would actually blend it. Is zucchini in your oats. It's actually delicious. It looks disgusting. It looks like puke, but it tastes so good. It tastes like basically like zucchini loaf and zucchini loaf is delicious. So basically you blend up your zucchini, you cook it in with, with your oats. Um, and then, so basically you just add it to your oats and like your, um, water or your almond milk, whatever you use in your oats, microwave it. Um, and then you mix it in. And then I would usually add protein powder as well. Not a lot. I actually don't like protein powder in my oats that much, but just like a little bit. And then a little drizzle of like nut butter and a couple, some berries. Oh, it's so good. It's like raw zucchini loaf. <laughs> Seriously though, you have to try it and then you can say you don't like it once you've tried it, but it's so good. Um, Jordan says she loves zucchini loaf. Yeah, you can add, you can make your oats so much because oats, again, they're not like a very high volume. Like you can't eat a ton of oats, unfortunately. I wish you could because I love them for like a lot of carbs or like they are a lot of carbs. So if you add the zucchini, which is a super low carb content, um, you can have way more oats. Hopefully that made sense. Maybe I sounded confusing. Cheryl said, Cheryl, you gotta try it. Make it for Chris then. 
<laughs> I'll make it for Brendan. <laughs> um, okay, so next one. This is like a random hack, but I used to th do this when I was in prep too. I honestly haven't had my calories low enough that I've had to do this in the last couple of years, but um, you can buy gelatin packs at pretty much any grocery store. And then you can add gelatin to your smoothies and it will make your smoothies massive and thick, which is just how I like it. Um, so yeah, you can also add it to like a slush. Like if you make a BCAA drink and you blend ice and then you add gelatin and water, it's literally like zero calories. I think there might be like two calories in the gelatin and it makes into this massive slush. Like it's huge. Um, and it's thick and it really fills you up. So that's like another little tip. <laughs> um, Cheryl says, ha ha ha, stop. I just thought of another one that I used to do. So actually really funny. My back like a couple years ago, it was like at least three. When was this? This wasn't in... No, okay. For some reason I had a weird flashback. It wasn't in Fort Mac. It was when I went to Vancouver the last time, I think. But if my mom or my sister watches this, they can let me know. Anyways, I was doing this phase where I would have um, yogurt, protein, uh, Greek yogurt, unsweetened Greek yogurt, 0% with protein powder. And then in addition to that, I would add um, sugar-free jello pudding. So again, that's definitely not like the epitome of health. Um, but I was trying to like eat high volume and this was when my calories were really low. So I would make the jello, the sugar-free jello first with just water, I think. And then like the pudding kind, and then I would add the Greek yogurt. So it like got bigger and then I would add the protein powder. So it like, got bigger again. <laughs> and then I would um, add the berries and like mix it up and drizzle like peanut butter, I think over it or like sugar-free syrup or something. And then I'd eat that. But yeah, so I was like, I loved it. I thought it was delicious. My mom liked it, but then I made it for like my sister and my brother-in-law when we were in Vancouver and like my brother-in-law, he's not in this group, but he's actually, um, my sister is doing her personal training certification right now and she made him a workout plan. So I'm actually very proud of him because he's been completing all his workouts. So shout out to him. Um, he's definitely not really like a fitness guy, but anyways, he like almost threw up. He did not like the Jello Greek yogurt pudding, <laughs> but I thought it was really good. Okay, so those are my random hacks for increasing your food volume. Those are some unconventional ones, but I mean, you guys can definitely share your own and come up with your own and you can just look at the food chart to see. Now I'm going to have a drink and then we're going to talk about shred desserts because that's what we're all here for, right? Okay, so the first one, okay, before I talk about this, I saw someone talking about something like this on social media and everyone everyone but there was a ton of comments on it being like if you eat this you if you eat like this you have an eating disorder and if you seriously just won't eat cake like you have an eating disorder and i just want to say that being aware of what goes into your body and trying to make healthier choices and trying to like eat high protein does not mean whatsoever that you have an eating disorder and I feel like that's so what's wrong with society. Like the fact that weighing your food makes us uncomfortable, not us, but like makes other people uncomfortable and makes us uncomfortable around other people. Like that is what's actually wrong. It's not the fact that we don't want to eat cake for dessert that makes us have an eating disorder. It's the fact that society is so fricked up with the way that they look at food, right? So again, I'm not advocating that you can never have dessert. I'm not advocating that you should, shouldn't ever have dessert or that you shouldn't ever eat full on sugary cake. You totally should and you totally can. But when you have specific goals and you're doing a specific program and everything's aligning in the fact that you want to dial in your shit so you can get as lean as possible, eating sugary cake isn't really a massive part of that. Doesn't mean you can't ever have it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I just want to address that. So my first dessert for Shred is um mug cake so it's actually really good i don't have an exact recipe there might be one in the original recipe book for cut and conquer um but basically what you do so obviously you guys can tell i don't cook um i just wing it based on my macros <laughs> so egg whites protein powder and almond milk stir that shit up in a cup Put it in the microwave for about 30 to a minute, depending on how hot your microwave is. Bring it back out, 
stir that shit up again, test out the consistency, put it back in the microwave, bring it back out, top it with some sprinkles, and then eat that. Um, Amanda, the cookbook would have been in your original, um, before the shred program, your original food charts would have had that recipe book attached to it. Um, so mug cake, again, it's really good if you make it with like a, um, cake batter, is that the word? Cake batter protein, birthday cake protein, um, with egg whites, almond milk. Oh, and you put in baking powder or soda. I don't know how to cook. It's one of those. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Okay, the next one, which is one of my favorites, I eat this one a lot, is cookie dough. So, peanut butter, um, or almond butter or sunflower butter, scoop of protein, a drizzle of water, and then you stir it up. And you just drizzle water in as needed until it becomes cookie dough consistency. Then you put a sprinkle of... Um, Himalayan pink salt on top and then you can add additional extras if you want to like I've actually put blueberries in mine before it's kind of weird but it's actually really really good um if you're not on shred you can even add like little mini chocolate chips or something if you're really really having a sweet tooth at night but again it's super super delicious that one's definitely going to be a little higher calorie because protein um I mean not protein peanut butter does have more calories but again at the end of the day we're still getting the nutrients that we need as long as it fits your macros um okay this one is actually really good and it tastes like a brownie surprisingly this is probably my top favorite one you're going to take a, a packet of cream of wheat which i believe contains 18 grams of carbohydrates i think they're like 23 to 28 gram packs um so then you're going to take your cream of wheat you're going to pour the hot water into the cream of wheat you're going to mix it around so it cooks up. Then you're going to add a scoop of chocolate protein. Then you're going to add a spoonful, a little spoonful of sugar, of unsweetened cocoa powder. Then you're going to mix that shit in. And then you're going to top it with some Himalayan pink salt. And if you're only into the brownie like I am, then you leave it. Or you could drizzle peanut butter on top so that you get the chocolate peanut butter brownie effect. Um, it's actually really, really good. It actually tastes like brownie batter. Um, so highly recommend trying that one out. The next one is protein pancakes. So definitely very good to experiment with because they are super versatile and a little random hack, which I don't know, could be gross, but like, I don't cook my protein pancakes all the way. Um, so they're like, I do cook them all the way, but I don't cook them. So they're dry. Like I like the, the inside a little bit moist. So they kind of taste like, I don't know, like a, a cookie as opposed to like a dry pancake. I'm not big on normal pancakes because I don't like dough, um, but I make them with oats and um, protein and then egg whites or whole eggs, depending on if I'm trying to have it like higher fat or lower fat. Um, and then you can add in like a banana as well, again, depending on how you're making them to fit your um, targets. Definitely if you add in a banana, it's going to bring the carb content up a little bit. But again, depending on how many you're making, you could add in three bananas, right? Um, so banana is delicious in there. Um, I've also added in crushed almonds to mine and it gives it like that texture and I like my protein pancakes to kind of be like a almost like a homemade granola bar so I add in crushed almonds or like crushed up cashews just a little bit and then just like play with your protein powder you can do I don't really like the chocolate ones too much but like the cookie um not cookie dough flavor cake batter flavor or vanilla is always a good um I think Megan had like a protein that sounded pretty good. I think it was like snickerdoodle or I can't remember, but it sounded really good. That one would probably be a good fit as well. And then you can also cook in, um, like you can cook berries into it, blueberries. You could just top it with like melted berries. Um, I've always, I haven't done this, but I think it'd be really good. Like chopped up apple in your pancakes, like cinnamon or like the apple pie spice. Um, and then pumpkin protein pancakes are another favorite. If you like pumpkin or you like pumpkin pie or pumpkin spice, highly, highly recommend adding pumpkin puree, the canned organic pumpkin puree to some of your protein pancakes. And like it cooks so nice and it tastes like fall. Um, another one. So I'm pretty sure all of you guys have done the yogurt and protein powder and berries or nuts. Um, you can also do like a frozen yogurt bark or like frozen yogurt with berries or protein powder. That's also very delicious. Um, it can be a super low calorie snack if you make it in bark and you can just like break it into little pieces and eat it. 
Um, another one that's super good that used to be a huge hit on the Shred program a couple years ago was like a blended coffee. So you would blend up your coffee or you could even do it with like powdered coffee if that's your jam. Um, but blended coffee with ice and protein powder, um, half a banana and some Greek yogurt. Delicious. It's like so, so delicious. And you can make it um, as like high calorie or low calorie as you want. So obviously you would just make it with like more coffee and less banana um, if you want it like lower carb or you can like pack it full, right? Um, Cheryl says, I'm going to try that brownie one. Brittany says, I always make my protein pancakes in bulk. Yes. And then keep them in the fridge and grab them for a quick snack. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah, that's so funny. I, I don't know if you guys were here when Carly was talking about the protein pancakes that I used to have in my freezer and she like thought it was a chicken burger and like made the protein pancake into a chicken burger on the bun and like took a bite and was like, holy shit, this is not a chicken burger. This is like something else. <laughs> so yeah, label them. Um, but yeah, protein pancakes are so handy to have, like, especially freeze them, put them in your fridge and just grab it and go. Mm. Okay. Here's another one I'm excited about. I haven't tried this, but someone should definitely try it. Actifry cookies, especially if you have an Actifry like mine. So I don't actually love it because it doesn't spin, but it does have like a solid bottom. So if you have one that has like a solid tray, Rochelle, I think yours has a solid tray. Um, I've heard of, I heard, I heard of these, I can't remember if it was like TikTok or someone in one of my groups, but, um, an Actifry cookie. So you basically take oats. I think it was an egg, but you could definitely use egg whites too. Some, a banana. And I think they put, I can't remember if they put blueberries or maybe they put chocolate chips. Regardless, even if you just did those ingredients, I think they'd still be really good. And then you basically like make it into a little cookie patty and then you put it in your Actifry and then you just Actifry it or air fry it or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it looked like this delicious like oatmeal cookie. So I haven't tried that one, but I, I wanted to talk about it because it looks delicious. Um, another one that I used to do all the time, especially when my calories were really low, um, corn thins. So the corn thins are kind of like a rice cake, but they're very, very, very thin. It's like a, a very thin rice cake, but it's made of corn. Um, you could also do this with a rice cake. I just find it didn't work as well with a rice cake. And you would take cream cheese. So my favorite was actually cream cheese with the pumpkin spice protein. Um, but you could use any protein. Mix that protein into some light cream cheese and then spread it on the corn thin and like let it sit for like five to ten minutes and then eat it. And it tastes like a cheesecake because the corn thin kind of gets like not wet, but like bendable, I guess you could say. Um, and then you eat it and it literally tastes like a cheesecake, especially when you haven't had cheesecake in a long time. Um, another one, this is not a dessert, but I wanted to bring it up because it was my, my favorite snack when my calories were super low. Um, little pieces of Swiss cheese wrapped in turkey bacon. So I would like cut the turkey bacon into like four pieces, take a little tiny piece of Swiss cheese, wrap it in the turkey bacon and stick a toothpick through it. And then I would take that to work. Like when I worked out on site and I would eat those <laughs> during my break. Um, I loved it. It's actually so tasty. Okay. Another classic. Most of you guys have tried this one. I've talked about it before. Cream cheese dip, light cream cheese, protein powder, and then dip your apple in it or strawberries or fruit of your choice. Um, this one, this one's a little more desperate, don't, but Samantha, if you're watching, I'm sure you can relate because we all know when we're like prepping for a show or have extra low calories, we got to do what we got to do. So, um, truffle balls and basically you would take cocoa powder and a little bit of stevia and a little bit of chocolate protein powder. And then you literally just add a drop of water at a time and you roll it into a ball and it makes like a truffle and there's like really like 15 calories per truffle ball but they're very truffly and rich so um those are more for like when you're super desperate <laughs> um this one this next one's actually a delicious idea um and you could totally change this and modify it and make it your own laura actually came up with this one last year during shred i think um, and it's a smoothie bowl and what she did, so she made like a thick smoothie, like a, a berry smoothie, I think, but you could do whatever flavor you want. And then she melted, um, cocoa powder and coconut oil together and 
poured it on the top of her smoothie and then froze it. So it was like a frozen ice cream with a chocolate lid. You know, those chocolate lids that you can crack. Um, and it looked so good and the calories were like amazing. And she had like all her healthy fats in there and like fruit and protein and yeah, like such a good idea. So shout out to Laura for that one. Um, so yeah, make and even just making a smoothie bowl in general, like those are very delicious and you can top them and make them creatively and make them pretty. Um, so yeah, that's another one. And then I have two more. So the second last one is this one is if you like pumpkin pie. If you don't like pumpkin pie, you probably won't like this. Rochelle, if you're still here, if you're listening, back me up on how good this one is. Um, canned pumpkin. So again, I usually just buy the E.D. Smith organic canned pumpkin. Or I think like Western Family has a pretty good one too. And then you literally just eat that. Pumpkin is super low carb. You can eat a lot of pumpkin. It's similar to like the other squashes, obviously. Um, and then you would add your vanilla protein. Mix that shit in really good. And then I find it tasted best with... Udo's oil. So Udo's oil is like another very great um, oil you can you can eat or drink, I guess. Um, but you could also just do olive oil. I feel like it has to have that. I don't know why it makes it taste way better. You add that into your protein. You mix it around, not your protein, your pumpkin and your protein. You mix it around and then you add pumpkin pie spice or cinnamon or nutmeg and then you eat that. And it just tastes like pumpkin pie filling and it's so good if you love pumpkin. Last one. Again, this one is kind of like when you're desperate. I used to do this one on prep as well. And it's egg white crepes. So basically I would take strawberry protein and I would whip it into my egg whites and then I would pour it into my pan and I would make a crepe. Again, it's definitely not your amazing crepe, but then you can like your typical amazing crepe from what's that place called? Like that, uh, that Dutch place that does all the crepes. But anyways, um, you can pull it out of the pan, put some strawberries on it, roll it up, drizzle it with some sugar-free syrup and you're good to go. So those are my shred desserts for you all. Um, Hopefully you guys got at least one or two out of there that you can try. So you can still stay on track with your nutrition targets, stay on track with your nutrition goals, and um, enjoy some sweeter options as well. So that is all for tonight. I hope you guys got some value for catching the replay afterwards. Just let me know. 